Productive grapevines are essential to ensure that the growth of the wine industry is sustainable. Healthy vineyards will ensure a consistent supply of grapes to meet the desired quality specifications and the target yields. Below the seemingly lush growth of many vineyards, there may be lurking a potential chronic problem. Diseases that attack the woody parts of a grapevine do not always exhibit early, clear symptoms, as do other diseases that attack green tissue. Utipa dieback is one such disease, and left unchecked, could devastate yields in our older vineyards. Dr Trevor Wicks of the South Australian Research and Development Institute describes the economic impact of Utipa. In South Australia, the, uh, the effect of Utipa on, on yield is pretty substantial, particularly in some of the old uh, vineyards, and particularly in vineyards that have been reworked uh, in the past five, six years. Uh, a lot of vines have died, uh, a lot of vines are dying, and uh, the vineyard managers in, in those places are, are quite worried about the, uh, the loss of production. In, in some of those vineyards, uh, I think they're in areas that are producing high quality wine and they're what I consider to be elite vineyards and so any loss of production in those is quite substantial in, in economic terms. Among several trunk diseases that affect grapevines, Utipa is one of the most destructive. It's an insidious disease due to the long period of time between infection and the appearance of symptoms. It's not a disease seen on young vines. Utipa is becoming more apparent in Australian vineyards greater than 10 years old where the vines have been exposed to the disease. A recent survey in South Australia showed about 5% of the vines overall had symptoms of the disease, with Shiraz and Grenache vines showing close to 10% incidence. Trevor Maas from the Grampians region in Victoria describes their experiences with Utipa. Back in uh, 79, it was on very low trellising and single wire hanging, all dense. So when I came here as a consultant, uh, we did a small amount of change, but they weren't that interested, so we took over from these people in 87, and then we went into cutting off the crowns and raising the canes to put in the higher trellising and vertical trellising, and at that stage we didn't notice anything for a few years, and then the YouTuber started to appear. Uh, we didn't treat it that seriously. Originally we started to cut off just below the crown, found that the stain was still there and it wasn't working, so we then went straight to the ground and uh, sterilised it. But the staff would always take everything out and burn it away from here. And then if anything reappeared, we would then uh, mark it, and after two years of marking, then they were cut out again. And uh, only through continually doing this, and we still are doing it, that we've found that we now got on top of it and we've gone from 11% infection down to possibly 1% of recurring, but it's off old vines, so it's just ones that have caught it and finally showing it. Symptoms of dying cordons were described back in the early 1900s. However, it was not until about 1973 in Australia that the fungus Utipa lata was first associated with the disease symptoms. The fungus had been known since the 1930s to attack apricot trees causing a dieback disease formerly known as gamosis. Numerous other host plants have been recognised in the past 20 years. The disease is recorded worldwide. Other countries such as France and the USA are also presently experiencing major problems with Utipa. Dr Morris Carter, formerly of the University of Adelaide, describes the early discoveries of Utipa in Australia. Yes. Uh, I was looking around one day, I was taken to a, a vineyard in the Modbury district of north, uh, up north a bit of uh, Adelaide, northeast of Adelaide, by one of the officers of the Department of Agriculture to have a look at uh, what then was causing them some concern 
a disease which had come to be known as dying arm disease in grapevines. <coughs> so we went into this vineyard and uh, we were looking around and they were fairly aged vines and there was some dead wood on them and curiously enough it didn't take very long to find some of this blackened dead wood which I had come to know when we saw that sort of thing on apricot it was indicative of the uh, reproductive stage of this fungus. So uh, I took some of that back to the lab and uh, to shorten the longer story, it very soon uh, yielded spores which were then grown out in uh, culture and they proved to be uh, identical in appearance with the colonies that we got from uh, the Utipa fungus when we collected from apricot. I uh, took it out into the field, inoculated into some apricots and waited a few months and uh, there was no, uh, no doubt about it, it was, it was confirmed. So there we had a problem. We'd found this thing in something totally different botanically, totally different from the apricot, quite unrelated botanically. What was it doing there? Was it causing mischief or was it just there incidentally reproducing itself on dead vine wood? And uh, there the uh, question rested for some considerable time actually. The disease is caused by the fungus Utipa lata. Early work in California found it was sometimes associated with Phomopsis, creating some confusion. The term dying arm has also been used in the past, but can be confused with the term dead arm, which has sometimes been used for Phomopsis. Referring to the disease simply as Utipa or Utipa dieback avoids any confusion. The disease develops from spores released from fruiting bodies called parathesia. The parathesia are found in old wood of grapevines or other host plants that have been killed by Utipa. They take several years to develop after death of the wood. Utipa develops on a wide range of species of plants, about 90 so far known. The most common ones are apricot, almond, peppercorn trees, hawthorn and apple. Many of these plants are found near vineyards. The spores are released from parathesia when they become wet from water. Spores can travel long distances in the air currents, with distances of 50 to 100 kilometres being recorded in field studies in California. However, heavily infected host plants within or in proximity to the vineyard are likely to offer the greatest risk of infection. A fresh batch of spores can be released after each rain or irrigation event. The parathesia are most productive from late winter through the season until late autumn. 